Welcome. Welcome to a new year at Hogwarts. And before we begin our banquet, I would like to say a few words. And here they are. Nitwit. Blubber. Ottman. Tweak. Thank you very much. Troll in the, the, the dungeon. Thought you ought to know. Silence! Everyone will please not panic. Prefects, lead your houses to their dormitories. Teachers, follow me to the dungeons. So, back again, Harry. I, I didn't see you, sir. Strange how short-sighted being invisible can make you. So you, like hundreds before you, have discovered the delights of the mirror of Erised. I didn't know it was called that, sir. But I expect you've realised by now what it does. It, well, it shows me my family. And it showed your friend Ron himself as head boy. How, how did you know? I don't need a cloak to become invisible. Now, can you think what the mirror of Erised shows us all? Let me explain. The happiest man on earth would be able to use the mirror of Z like a normal mirror. That is, he would look into it and see himself exactly as he is. Does that help? It shows us what we want. Whatever we want. Yes. And no. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest, most desperate desire of our hearts. You, who have never known your family, see them standing around you. Ronald Weasley, who has always been overshadowed by his brothers, sees himself standing alone, the best of all of them. However, this mirror will give us neither knowledge or truth. Men have wasted away before it, entranced by what they have seen, or been driven mad, not knowing if what it shows is real, or, or even possible. The mirror will be moved to a new home tomorrow, Harry, and I ask you not to go looking for it again. If you ever do run across it, you will now be prepared. It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Remember that. Now, why don't you put that admirable cloak back on and get off to bed? Professor Dumbledore, can I ask you something? Obviously, you've just done so. You may ask me one more thing, however. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I see myself holding a pair of thick woollen socks. Uh, one can never have enough socks. Another Christmas has come and gone, and I didn't get a single pair. People will insist on giving me books.